Good evening. Welcome to the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission for Wednesday, February 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Um, in attendance, we have our commissioners to my far right, uh, James Hines. To my next right is Jeff Cohan. Uh, next to me is uh, James Fitzsimmons. And to my left is uh, Commissioner David Parent, and I am J.P. Benoit, uh, acting chair for today. And uh, to my far, far left, we have uh, our town employees, Kevin Pugini and Cheryl Ann Tooby. Um, first, I'd like to do the Pledge of Allegiance, so if you'd all rise. Thank you. Uh, the first order of business is to uh, actually make an announcement first. We will not be hearing uh, special permit, new emissions building, Choate Rosemary Hall, 58, I'm sorry, 59 North Elm Street, application 407-22. The application has been withdrawn and resubmitted yesterday, so we will not be hearing that today. We will be more than likely hearing it in March. We also will not be hearing application 401-23, special permit fill and excavation, Hutton Street 21, LLC 12, 1299 South Broad Street. So those two we will not be hearing. Uh, can I ask for a uh, vote on the January 9th uh, minutes? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the January, minute, January 9th, 2023 minutes as submitted. Do I have a set here a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be now hearing public hearing. Uh, let's see. Item number three, special permit change of use, Wallingford Center Street, LLC, 604 Center Street, application 402-3. Can I ask the secretary to read in the correspondence? Um, do, you, do you want the legal uh, yeah, I'm sorry. first? Yeah, sorry about that. Legal notice and then the correspondence. Following public hearings will be heard at Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission's meeting <laughs> of Wednesday, February 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the town council chambers of town hall located at 45 South Main. Application 402-23, special permit for a change of use to turn an office into a residential unit to create a multifamily dwelling at 604 Center Street, R6 residential zone. And the correspondence we have an interdepartmental referral uh, data submission December 9th, 2022 from Scott Shipman, uh, Senior Engineer, Water and Sewer. We have a letter from Kevin Pagini, Town Planner, to the applicant uh, dated December 20th, 2022. And we have a interdepartmental referral uh, from the town engineer dated December 9th, 2022. We have a zoning investigation record uh, I guess the item number is 2022-033. And I believe that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Would you like to give us a brief introduction of the project? Thank you. Yes. Good evening. I'm Jim Lachlan, an attorney here in town. My office is at 221 North Main Street. On behalf of the applicant LLC, with me are members, the two members of that LLC, Weston Ulrich 
and Lou Marino. This would change the first floor office where Roz Page used to have her office next to Silver Pond Apartments, change it from an office into a residential unit. This is an R6 zone that also has an overlay, is part of an overlay district that allows for multifamilies when the property is larger. Um, so this doesn't qualify under that um, overlay district, but it's important to keep in mind. Um, it makes sense because Wallingford's town center is becoming more and more residential. It also fits into your regulations that this can change. While we talk about it, I ask that you keep in mind just a few things because that's what, that's, they are the reasons why they fit into your regulations. First off, we would change from a commercial to residential in a residential zone. Secondly, we would be more in conformity with your regulations because only four parking spaces would be required, whereas if you keep it as an office, seven parking spaces will be required. We've been asked to eliminate the parking lot in the front. We have no objection to that, but we will follow your direction, of course, if you want to have it as a condition of approval. Um, there's some good in keeping the parking lot there, and there's some good in removing it. If you remove it, you will be in compliance with no parking in the front yard. If you have it, keep it there, that would protect off street parking even more in a busy district next to Silver Pond Apartments. Again, whatever you prefer is fine with us. Um, with those in mind, we are here now without a variance for a two family because one of the sections in your regulation says that if you want to change a non-conformity use to one that is not any more objectionable, you can come straight to the commission and ask without having to ask for a variance. You come under the special permit application. And when you're addressing a special permit application, you have to keep in mind the zoning reg, the neighborhood, and the safety. We're, reduce, we're changing this from commercial to residential. We're making for less parking. We will remove the lot if you want us to. All not more objectionable than what's there already. So we're okay. As well, those same conditions mean that we fit into your special permit requirements so that in your discretion, can't approve this knowing that it would survive judicial scrutiny. I'm pretty sure that's all I have for you. Um, I am available for any questions that you might have, as well as Mr. Albrook and Mr. Marino. All right, thank you. Uh, any commission members have any questions or comments? You can go. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, just a couple comments. Yeah, I'm in favor of uh, uh, this, this application. I do have a couple questions. Um, it, it's mentioned that uh, uh, there's, a, there's a sign in front, and the suggestion is that be removed. There's no objection to that, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm actually not sure what the sign is, but. <laughs> Um, and it, yeah, I, I would also like to see the uh, parking in the back. I, I, I think uh, you know, restoring the front to the grassy area and having the parking in, in the back. And again, that makes sense. Yeah. Be, be more appropriate. And I do, understand, that, I do understand the sign has been taken down already. Okay, yeah. great, great. Um, so with that, yeah, I have no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fitzsimmons. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just, I apologize. I'm flipping through the papers. How many total apartments would be in this um, property? Two. So one upstairs, one downstairs. Yes, and there's one currently okay. upstairs. All right. And that would remain unchanged. I, I, I guess on this one, you know, I, I you know, I know it, it took a while. Um, I'm not sure how long your applicant has owned the property, but the, your request tonight is to correct a zoning violation, right? Well, one of the things entered into the record was the, the um, zoning investigation that this, this site is currently in zoning violation. 
and I, it, it's the only violation being that it would, didn't have the proper approval? Correct, they did start the work. And I, I guess I'm being too lawyerly here. Okay. We're here so that we don't have to go to the ZBA to correct a violation. Okay. We came to you directly without having to go to the ZBA because we're proposing a change to a nonconformity that's not more objectionable than what's there already. Okay. And I have an explanation too on that violation if you'd like to hear it, but if you don't want to talk about it, that's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I of course want to talk about it since I raised it. <laughs> Sorry. These guys have their real day jobs and they bought this together. I guess there was one other project they worked on in town. What's existing on the first floor was what was there before the business. The kitchen is already there, the bathroom is already there. It was a residence before it was a business. It was a dentist's office, then it was Ra's cage. And now they're just bringing it back to what it was a long, long time ago, and they just started. And for months before they were violated, they were calling the planning and zoning office for a change of use form. And that's what triggered the investigation, their own. So they sort of stepped in it in the same time as finding out the procedure themselves. And Plus, I attest, they're nice guys, really. Yeah, we, we don't get to vote on nice, but thank you for the okay. explanation. <laughs> um, I, I'm familiar with the property, because um, one, one of the uses you mentioned, my, my oral surgeon happened to be there. So okay. I know the property, and, and uh, previously this commission, most of us knew Roz uh, before she retired. So um, I support the application primarily to correct the, the zoning. Um, it, you know, it's always better when someone asks before get it going to the zoning violation log, so to speak. So right. um, I'll support it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Yes, Commissioner Parent. Um, and I can see from the way the procedures are, or from the way the proceedings are going, getting the, the general tone and tenor, but they're going to approve this thing. Okay? Um, we would have approved it if we'd been asked back in the summertime. Right. And we would have, my difficulty with the after the fact application, even though yours is minor, is that um, they can be very, they can be very costly. Now in this, ca in this case here, uh, it can be very costly and are they also get the the impression to the general public, which I hope the people in this audience and our audience, TV audience at home are aware, that you know you can do something wrong. If anything comes, you know, if you ever thought, well, you just come in here, a few happy words, and we're done. That's a bad one. That's a bad impression to create. The other thing is that if your tenant and so doing this has other costs. For example, I believe the property. Uh, in my readings, I read a little note there that they found that when they did the title search to sell this place, they found the violation. And that was back in September, so I'm assuming that the sale was before that. And by not having that permit, they first of all, they forwarded, they hazarded the sale. You know, this is, by the way, they're trying to sell this house just as interest rates are going up like this. An investor, if he didn't want to really buy this property, had a perfect out. He's in violation. Second thing is that what would be a, a few minute hearing, you know, now, which they could have probably done by themselves, now involves an attorney. Well, that's a cost from that, cost involved in that. The third thing is that the delay so far, and I think it was about four months or so, right? The money they could have had from the sale isn't there. That's four, I mean, it, that was, I think it was a substantial si sales price. And I think, you know, just take the interest on that investment that you could have had, four months of interest on that is a substantial sum of money. And finally, when they finally do close, they're not going to get as much money as they would have if they sold it back in the fall because now they're responsible for the additional four months of, of taxes. Now, they're all aware of this. But I think, I think it's important that the general public who sees this, they know is that you know, when in doubt, go down, get the application in your hand, fill it out, get it done, and you save yourself all sorts of grace. Oh yeah, the last thing here is we're twi charging you twice as much for a favorable ruling as you'd gotten before. Right. So I just would hope that 
people realize that even in a situation where, you know, we would have voted for it, and you know that uh, that it can be costly when you, when somebody fails to apply uh, before uh, on time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I would just say I'm generally in support of this. I, I would say that uh, front lawn would like that restored. So um, to our staff, anything on your desk? No, I have no further comments. All right. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak for or against this? If not, do you have any other comments? Nothing. Thank from you. the applicant? Nope. All right. Then I will bring it back to the commission for action. Mr. Chairman, I move that we close the public hearing. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? <clears throat> Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? None. All right. Do I have an action on the application? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the commission approve a special permit requested for Wallingford Street, LLC, located at 604 Center Street for conversion of an office to a multifamily residential use on plans entitled Compilation Plan Prepared for Wallingford Center Street, LLC, dated 2522, subject to the following conditions. Number one, comments in an inter-office memorandum from the senior engineer, Scott Shipman, of the Wallingford Water and Sewer Department to the Planning and Zoning Department dated December 22nd, 2022. Number two, comments from the Office of the Wallingford Town Planner dated 12, 2022. Number three, that the front parking area is removed and restored to lawn and the current sign is removed before the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. And finally, number four, six copies of the approved final plans be forwarded to the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Office. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, start the vote from my far right, Mr. Hines. Yes, to approve. Commissioner it, Cohen? Yes. 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 Uh, motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you again for your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Moving on to the next uh, application 403-23, special yes. permit, change of use, B. Kaplan, 28 South Whittle C. Ave. Please come up to the desk. I, I, I'm not part of this application, but I'd like to address the commission for 30 seconds. Let us get through our, our process through and we'll, we'll let you do it. We were number two on the list and you just announced that we weren't going forward. Oh, okay, then I'll come back to you. Okay. Um, would you like to read the um, notice and also the uh, correspondence, please? Yes. Um, following public hearing 403-23, special permit for a change of use at 28, 28 South Whittlesey Avenue to change a residential property to a religious meeting assembly center, R6 residential zone will be heard at the Wallingford Planning and Zoning meeting Wednesday, February 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the town council chambers of town hall at 45 South Main Street. Correspondence. I have an interdepartmental referral from the environmental planner uh, dated January 5th, 2023, received January 20th, 2023. Um, memorandum from the Wallingford Fire Department dated January 25th, 2023, and an interdepartmental referral dated January 5th, 2023, received February 1st, 2023, from Scott Shipman senior engineer water and sewer and that's it thank you thank you uh applicants are here give us a kind of a description of the project and anything that you would like us to know okay 
Um, good evening. Thanks for, thanks for being here. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share what we hope to be able to do. One thing, just uh, sure. for the record, name and, and oh, where you're from. <clears throat> My name is Rabbi Baruch Kaplan. I live on 22 South Little Sea Avenue. Um, here with me is Ilya Mowerman, who is a contractor uh, to work on the property. Um, so my wife and I were residents in Wallingford for the past 18 years. Uh, we opened an organization called Chabad Jewish Center. Um, and our, our goal is to have a, provide opportunities for people that like to learn more about the Jewish heritage, to have a place where they can come together, they can study, they can learn, uh, celebrate Jewish holidays, etc., etc. For the past, um, <clears throat> since 2008, we've been operating out of a storefront on 174 uh, Center Street. Um, it, um, and then due to COVID, we uh, closed the storefront. And for the past two years, I've been teaching on Zoom, having people come to my home and meeting there, uh, inviting you know, people to, the organization has been continuing, but we haven't had a proper space. Um, we've purchased the house next door to me. So I'm 28, 22 South Whittlesea, this is 28 South Whittlesea. And the hope is that we can move it from a multifamily um, residential into a meeting space uh, for um, our community. Um, I think it's important to know that my day job, I, I spend my day in Orange, Connecticut. I'm a principal at the Southern Connecticut Hebrew Academy. So most of the activities that happen in Chabad are either Friday night, Saturday day, um, or small meetings where people come to my home to study and learn. So we're not the type of organization that runs throughout the day. You know, I'm working all day in, um, in, in Orange. Um, I think it's also important to know that we've been operating for quite a while, and we know how much parking we've had in the previous center. So Center Street, it is a, a main street, but there were also were only four parking spots in the back. Um, traditionally, um, the classes will have about 10 people that come to, uh, to, to learn. Um, some of them walk, some of them drive. We have currently four parking spaces in the driveway, and we are hoping to provide another four parking spaces as well. That's without my home, which is next door as well. Um, I, I think it's important that, and I, I'd like my neighbors to know this, is that the character of the house will not change. <laughs> We are, by definition, a family organization. It's not a traditional synagogue. Um, and I think that it takes the question of who lives in that house. Until now, it's been renters. You know, They come and go. And um, I live next door. To me, it's very important that uh, I love our community, and I want to retain the character of the community. So that's something that's important to me, and, and I will be the next door neighbor. So I care about the community deeply. Um, that's it. Thank you. Bring it back to the commissioners with any questions or comments. Commissioner Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm fine with this. <laughs> I actually have just an administrative uh, question because um, in our motion, I don't believe I received comments from the town planner dated 12-20-2022. Those were the other application? Oh, yeah. I think I oh I'm, I'm sorry. I think I missed Forget, Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong. Okay. I'm all set. I'm, I'm good with your app. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do we have any other commissioners? Mr. Fitzsimmons. I just want to clarify. So the entire use of the building will be for assembly. There'll be no rental apartment on the second floor. That is correct. So you're abandoning the residential use. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Mr. Pagini. Uh, no, I believe they've answered all my questions that I had previously. Uh, so. I have no further comments or questions. Okay, thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there any, I see one waving back there, and it'll be next. Yep, come on up. 
make sure for the record, name and where you're from. Hi, Ann Costantino, um, 17 South Whittlesey. I live diagonally across from Rabbi. We've, I've known him for how many years he's been here. I just have some questions as sure. far as, you know, parking is a I do. crazy on that street. It's a one way. Um, part of my concern is safety, because I know some of um, your congregation does not drive from Saturday sundown to sundown, um, uh, between Friday and Saturday. You, um, you have, there, I know there's a lot of people come from out of state. I mean, I don't, I, I admire what you do. Um, I don't want that, but I'm worried safety-wise. My driveway sometimes is so tiny, I can't get out. Um, it is one way, and it's been that way for probably 18 years. There are still people driving down the wrong way. Um, as far as getting fire, ambulance, police through, sometimes just with our general traffic, it's hard. We do have a parking lot next door, but that is private property. There is part, I don't know if you would direct people to go over. I'm more concerned with the safety and with that part of it and so that I can still get in and out of my driveway. We have children. I mean, you have children. I have children. I mean, we have grandchildren. It's just I'm trying to figure this out. Because I just happened to see the sign go up yesterday, and I went, oh, let me check. Or this morning, I went, oh, it's tonight. So that was a little surprising to me as so, well. So I, I, I appreciate you, your you questions. You know the craziness. And, and I, I, I'm completely aware. So here, here are the couple of things that I, <clears throat> that I, I think is important that I make clear. Uh, number one, um, we have currently that one parking, that driveway that goes all the way up. And and behind the red house. Correct. Okay, yep. There, will, there is enough room to create another driveway going up on the other side. Okay. Okay. Um, which, uh, with, by any estimates, is at least eight cars right there. Okay. Um, the other thing is we have in the past used that corner parking lot. Oh, um, yeah. And, I, and, I, and I'm willing, cars, and I'm yeah. willing to get permission um, yeah, and, and work through with that. We've actually gone over to them and said, you know, I know it's town hall here also. We've got green lines up here so, and behind Holy Trinity as well. So for me, it's going to be very important that my community that comes understands <laughs> that either they're parking in the parking lot or on the street on Center Street. Okay. We do not have, I know we have, I have relatives, personal relatives that come from New York. Well, yeah, and that I see, so I'm like, That's okay, true. where are we going to work this? The people that come from our community are, are local. Okay. They know, they, they know the place. Um, and it's important, and you will, I, I'm going, to, I, there'll be a special point to me that either you park there, and if there aren't spots there, we have an entire center street with parking lots. I also there. know there's gonna be probably like five or six college kids that are coming up, because your house, my house, and one other house are the only single family dwellings on that road. And now with you not having the upstairs of the red house being residential, so that limits, but there's three family on, two family right, next right. to you, so there's three family right. on the right. other side, I mean, or a multi-family block, 100%. like a half a block, and there was, what? there was controversy when it went one mm. way. I I'm definitely can see it going. I mean, and I, I just want to make sure everybody's safe because we have an idea, like I can get in and out. I mean, I know there's at least five college students that will be back come May, so that's going to be more parking, more cars. The neighborhood has grown up, so everybody's driving. Everybody's got a car. Most of the um, houses do not have driveways accessible for their renters. We have, we have a driveway, but we also sometimes have five cars. So it doesn't all fit in our driveway. And you're running the same thing. Your kids are getting older. I see them driving. I'm like, there we go. There so go. I'm just trying well, to point that out, that there is that issue of you know, so definitely more safety concerns than anything else. On that note as well, think about the fact that currently we, had, we would have two tenants, which, yeah. which were four, four cars. They won't be there most of the week, which means the average night you won't have people parking I mean, but again, like on the weekends when you're doing Absolutely. Your thing that I mean, that's my party time. This is my weekend time. You know, they, it kind of all falls in during the week. I'm in school, you know, except, you know, doing that. I teach. We're back and forth. So there's all that kind of goes in. Your quieter time is our busy time and then vice versa. So just to let you guys know that that part of South Wilson is a pain in the neck. Parking lots. All that. Thank you. Next, yep. Just do me a favor for name, for and f get closer to the microphone so that that need it for the record. Um, Pam, 
I live at 58 South Dover Street. I live at the corner. There's a huge closer to Mike. I'm sorry. Our biggest problem is I know where he lives. I walk past his house all the time. We have the problem, like, his side of the street is the dentist's office. They take up most of the street. Plus, they park on our side of the street where there's no parking. So we all have a hard time with not just, like, with your part. There's no parking because, like she said, there's no parking. So the whole parking situation because the people refuse to park in the dentist parking lot. So their side of the street is no parking because there's only one side parking. So it's all, it's all the parking. So is there like maybe something we can do to help him besides like, you know, like we can't get out of our driveway because no parking, you know, they park where they're not supposed to park. You know, he knows, I, you know, so it's crazy. The parking is crazy on that side of the street. That's why my, 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 my first thought here mm -hmm. was about the parking. Yeah, it's... Um, is thinking about, and I'm, and I'm, I'm a neighbor. Right, no, I, I, I walk by his house I'm, all the time. And I so see we're, we're talking it. about hopefully having at least eight parking right, spots. It's, 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 I, I'm, I see it. I see the, the dentist people in the office park up there, and it's limited parking on that one side, and it's crazy. It's that one side of the street. It's because it's one, it's very narrow, and it's, it's really crazy that one side. You know, and like she said, it's really, really bad. Thank um, you. One second. We, just, we do public sure. comments, and we'll, I'll have you respond. Anybody else uh, right here? Uh, yeah. I, uh, my name's Francis Palmer. I live at 29 South Whittlesey Avenue, right across, just about across the street from this gentleman. I'm not in favor of this at all. I don't believe we need a religious center in my residential area where I've lived for 43 years. Um, there's the parking, as you've heard the ladies talk about, is, is crazy because there's no parking. And I've watched people double park. People go the wrong way. I've watched people stop their cars, unload, and get out of their cars and go in their houses on the wrong side of the road. Uh, it's really not a place that you need a, a people coming and going. To say nothing about my uh, value of my house, I can imagine when I go to sell it and people look across the street, see a religious center, well, that must be a selling point. I don't think so. So uh, I have nothing personal against this man. I wish he'd go back to Center Street. Sounds like a good idea. It doesn't belong on South Whittlesey Avenue. It's a residential area. It's a two-family home. I've watched that house for 40-something years, and uh, it always had Great people live there, and this, this man, I don't know him. And I'm sure he's a great man, nice man. I have no idea. I just don't believe it belongs in our neighborhood. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Oh. Hi, Jennifer Yandolfi. Um, I live at 76 South Wilsey. I am, I'm, I'm a landlord and my parents have owned the property for 46 years, so we are part of this community. Um, having a commercial type of entity in a residential area, especially that side of South Wilsey, it's very, I would say it's just too tight of a space. Um, I don't oppose what, what you want to do commercially, but commercially, not in the center of the street. There's commercial buildings on every corner of South Willesee, South Willesee Ward, then South Willesee, um, South Willesee Ward on the other street, South Willesee Prince. They're corner, corner lots. If this was going to be at the corner of the street, I say, yeah, go for it. It's in, in the middle of houses. So like everyone's been saying, it's this traffic, it's, it's parking, it's a one-way street parking. We didn't have a lot of snow this year, yet last year we did. That parking got even tighter. I know that people are allowed, you know, I always tell my tenants, you know, park at the park where you can if it's, there's a parking ban, but you have to take that into consideration as well. So I, 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 I like having the diversity, and I, and I, I lived in Stanford for years. So seeing another synagogue come up here and diversity to Wallingford, that's amazing. 
I just don't think South Wilsey is a little bit too tight to have this and to have this amount of um, people going back and forth. Thank you. Uh, any other public comments? I guess, um, Do me a favor, say it again. Ann Cosentino, 17 South Whittlesey. Thank you. Um, I guess when it went one way, and you had brought up a good point about parking only on one side, please do not revisit parking on both sides because it's, you cannot back out of driveways. And that I fought very, very hard to get not done 15, 18 years ago um, because you cannot take out. I mean, I had a small car at that time the size of the cars and, and everything else, you cannot back out without hitting, taking a car across the way. That's something that you really, just, and that has nothing to do with the Just so you, we don't have jurisdiction on that okay, either. Okay, well, I'll so. just put it out there too, because it's just true, it's tight, and it's just something to think about, and it is in the whole thing, but I just figured I had a Thank you. Detention. Any other, I'm gonna bring it back to the commission. Can I respond or do you want me to? Yeah, I'm going to have you respond in one second. I just, are any commissioner members have any other questions? Correct. Uh, would you like to respond? Applicant? Yeah, so I, 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 I'm taking, I'm trying to take all of this into account. I'm, I'm a neighbor there. I am the closest neighbor next door. Um, and, you know, the first thing that I thought about is how would we work parking? Because I don't want this to be. Uh, something that affects my neighbors in a negative way. Um, and that's why initially the, the, the first thought was, how do we put enough parking right there? The second thought was, <clears throat> how do we make sure that our community understands that if there is no parking, they park on the street or they park, there's numerous parking lots within, within uh, 100 or 200 feet. Uh, with regards to the, the worth of the house, I think, I, I, I think they'll find that the house will be extraordinarily well maintained um, the facade is going to still look like a single family home. It's not going to take a commercial look to it. I, we're not looking to change that at all. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think it's going to be something that will actually, it, it, the, how, the worth of the house, I believe, will raise from what we're doing right now. Uh, we're taking an old house. Uh, we're going to restructure it. It'll be certainly a house that its resale value will go much higher, I believe, than, than what it is now. So, uh, just do me a favor, name, sure, sure. where you're from. <clears throat> sure, Ilya Moerman. Uh, I am not a Wallingford resident. Uh, I used to be about 10 years ago. But I do assist services uh, to the rabbi. I've known the rabbi since he's been here in Wallingford 18 years. <clears throat> I will say this, as somebody that assists his uh, services, usually on just high holidays, uh, as we go to his services, We've always uh, looked to not, you know, how can I say this, uh, create a nuisance to the community. Uh, we've, uh, I've gone to his house numerous times where, uh, let's say a Shabbat dinner, there's uh, a few people invited, so forth. We park on Center Street. We know that South Little Sea is, is, you know, it's residential, lots of people parking on the street. It's, it's you know, I don't know, I, I, I think that we make a very conscious effort as to not to disturb the neighborhood. And again, the intention here is to make uh, whatever the dwelling is nicer. And I, just to add one little thing is, I, I, remain, I will remain a neighbor. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm, I'm always open to hearing if there's an issue or something that I can fix. Okay. Bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could, I, I want to start with the um, a question through you to the town planner. <clears throat> so this application is right now before us is a special permit to request to convert to a, a multifamily. No, it's a converting a multifamily to a uh, religious. Sorry, to a religious assembly center. We don't have a site plan, correct? Uh, there is. Should be. Not, I, have it, but 
I have the property survey. Oh. I guess what I'm looking for is, um, and I was going to reference uh, to you, is the, it appears the office of the fire marshal went out to the site and um, he says plans shall be submitted for the use and layout of the building. And so that, that was the fire marshal's comment in his memo, which was shared with us, and that was from two weeks ago. So that was made me think, so the fire marshal, in light of the information regarding the traffic, the parking challenges, I was thinking, I don't, I don't see a parking plan. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, I think I, I couldn't classify it as an, a use that would fall into these. I looked at it as a use not listed above as determined by the commission. Um, so since they have an existing facility in close proximity uh, and they have eight current spaces, they were proposing eight spaces uh, for this facility. Yeah, you know, and, and again, it, it, through you, Mr. Chairman, I, I guess what I was thinking is, okay, first they're going to request a special permit to change the use and then come back with a site plan. Because the, the way it's on the agenda, it just asks for a special permit. It doesn't ask for a site plan approval. I know it's an existing structure, but it's converting from residential to um, a religious assembly center. So as the last applicant there, you know, with the apartments, they showed the parking plan. Mm -hmm. So I don't see a parking plan. Yeah, if you'd like them to show a parking <laughs> plan as far as the... You, do you have one? Or no, no. nothing was submitted. Okay. No. Because, I, and again, I, I think, thank you, because I think through the applicant, he mentioned um, the plan is to have eight parking spaces. And, and you know, the challenge here is is most of our... Um, religious uses in town are in residential zones. Most of our schools are in residential zones. Um, I used to live um, three doors down from Wallingford's synagogue. So, you know, and, and a, a challenging parking during heavy use, just like neighbors who, um, you know, live near any church, you know, during weekend services. So I'd like to see a parking plan as part of this application. Um, I heard the I heard the public and and, there, and I think, you know, when I was living down in North Orchard, the street was one way. So I hear you. When you start talking about one way parking, one way street, I get it. Parking on the street, I everything you said, you know, I it brought back for me. But I guess the, the, I think for um, knowing this the, the area, knowing that it's going to convert, um, you know, from residential to a different use, um, I'd like to see a parking plan before. Um, moving forward, but that's why I was asking the town planner because the application I see is just for a special permit versus a site plan. So I, I, I don't know if I'm being technical thinking most times I would see the site plan, excuse me, special permit to be granted and then we would vote separately on, on the site plan. So, Right, that's why I just wanted to open the public hearing, get your perspective on it as a commission and uh, see how many parking spaces would be required since okay. I don't think it falls technically under a church or just a regular assembly hall. It's sort of in between. Um, so if you can maybe represent better as to where you know yeah. parking can go, where it won't be an issue, then um, it's certainly you know within your right as a commission to do that. So, as I said, you know, thank you. I mean, because the office of the fire department said plans shall be submitted, I was thinking, okay, it's a two-step process. So we're st we're at the well, he always uh, requires a floor plan before the issuance of a CO just to make sure, you know, safety oh, wise. Safety first. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, would be, I would like to, to receive a, 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 a parking plan, a little more detail regarding, as the fire marshal said, plans shall be submitted for the use and layout of the building, and I support that request um, before being able to move forward. Any other commissioners? Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, just just to follow up on the on the parking because um, uh, yeah, it's abs absolutely a concern. But I, I thought I he I heard you say that you know there's an existing driveway in the property, and you're going to build another driveway. Did, did I hear you say that? I would yeah. like to. Yeah. Okay. But there's so, room on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so that that would, you know, give a few more spots as as you 
you know, sure. mention. The neighbor had recently put up a yeah. driveway right there, and we had discussed the idea of <clears throat> enlarging that driveway and enough for two cars easily to go up back and forth. Right. And then, um, perfect. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, having a, a parking plan as part of this should be pretty straightforward, I would think. Any other commissioners? Got, you heard kind of what the commissioners are looking for for the next uh, meeting, which is in March. I don't know if we have anything else. Just a, as a question, so to clarify, the parking plan would be a resubmission of... Do me a favor, name. And I'm sorry, Ilya Mowerman. Uh, sorry. So the, the resubmission would be uh, that's basically something similar to that, when you, you the, the site plan, illustrating the parking where parking would be, yes. yes. Okay. On site. On site, right. Is that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you in Thank motion you. to continue? To, uh, yeah. Mr. Um, can I get a motion to continue this? Mr. Chairman. Application? Oh. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Commission continue the application for Kaplan at 28 South Whittlesey Avenue to our March meeting. Here's second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays, abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving back to uh, application number two, or on public hearing, special permit, fill in excavation, Hutton Street 21 LLC 1299 South uh, Broad Street 401 23. Can I ask uh, Commissioner Cohan to read the public notice and all correspondence received? Yes, uh, the following public hearing, 401-23, special permit, excavation and fill for approximately 300 cubic yards of earthen material at 1299 South Broad Street, RF40 zone, will be heard at the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission meeting Wednesday, February 15th at 7 p.m. in the Town Council Chambers of Town Hall located at 45 South Main Street. And I will dig up the correspondence. Give me a second. Okay. Um, I have a interdepartmental referral dated December 2, 2022, received January 3rd, 2023, from Allison Kapuczynski, town engineer. I have another interdepartmental member from uh, the Assistant Fire Marshal. Data submission December 2nd, 2022. Received December, looks like 18th, 2022. And that is all I have. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cohan. Uh, applicants, if you'd like to, now is this application still in wetlands? It is, your, okay. yes. Uh, just for record, name, where you're sure. from. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, good evening. My name is attorney Carl Landolina from the firm of Fahey and Landolina, 487 Spring Street in the town of Windsor Locks. I'm joined to my right by Sarah Castaglioli, uh, uh, I'm sorry, there's an A at the end of that name. I should know better. Um, from the firm of BL Engineering, uh, who's the project uh, manager uh, and engineers. And seated somewhere in the audience is a representative. Who's there? Uh, it's Mr. Nicholas Plummer from Hutton Build, which is a, uh, a commercial uh, building operation out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So, um, just very brief, briefly, thank you for hearing us. Uh, we understand that there will not be a vote tonight because you need a report, final report from wetlands. Our next meeting with them is March 1st, and we're hopeful to uh, get that final approval from them. This is a, a, a property uh, on the Meriden Wallingford uh, line. The existing building, which is a banquet facility, actually is located on both sides of that line. Some of the buildings in Wallingford, 
Some of the building is in Meriden. The plan here is to demolish the existing building and to construct a car wash facility. All of the uh, pr proposed improvements, all of the uh, impervious surface, the, the, the car wash facility, the parking areas, the drainage structures, everything is to be located in the town of Meriden. We have approval from their Wetlands Commission and from their Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit. The only activity that's proposed in uh, Wallingford is to uh, take up the asphalt that part of the building and the asphalt that's located in Wallingford, put topsoil down, and to put uh, lawn and some landscaping in there. And as we get closer to the wetlands, there'll be a uh, conservation seed that's planted there and a, a no mow area. So, um, and we're still discussing those details with your wetlands commission. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sarah. She can explain the details of the project. Over here so I can flip the board for you. Um, so this illustration you can see is- Excuse me for, uh, sorry to interrupt that. Sagli Hola, uh, licensed professional engineer from BL Companies. Uh, this plan you can see is the existing conditions of the site. This line right here is the town line, so the property falls between both towns. Um, the existing building also straddles that line, uh, so this orange color is the building. So it is largely paved right now. Uh, the wetlands are to the rear of the site. There is two separate wetlands. Um, but the site is almost entirely uh, parking at the moment with two different curb cuts, uh, one in Wallingford, one in Mer Meriden. And then this plan demonstrates the proposed design. Uh, there will still be two curb cuts, one in, one out, but those are both on the uh, Meriden side of the lot. So the, the curb cuts on the Wallingford side will, uh, will replace the curb there uh, there's no access. And this lighter hatch is the lawn seed, and this is the conservation seed mix, uh, which has some pollinator plants, and as well as some trees and shrubs towards the rear of the site. But there will be no building on the Wallingford site. Um, I can go through the utility plans or any other uh, grading and drainage plans, uh, but those are all located on the Meriden side of the Commissioners have any questions? Thank you. Any more in your presentation? No, I have nothing further. Okay. The chairman, really. It's pretty set, you know, pretty uh, simple plan as far as what's going on in, in Wallingford. Thank you. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on it? Seeing none, I'll bring it back. Uh, any commissioners have anything else? Not our town planner. Uh, no further comments. Uh, generally, though, when something does not get approved by wetlands, the uh, applicant lets me know that they want to present. Um, so just next time, just inform me. I guess I apologize if there was confusion there. Uh, that's quite all right. We appreciate that you adding us or taking us up tonight. Obviously, we're under contract. We've got tight time frames with sellers, and so we appreciate you hearing this part of it. Um, we just wanted to hear if you had any input, and, and next time, um, hopefully, we'll have that wetlands approval, and we'll communicate uh, w with staff. Um, I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll know themselves on March 1st whether we got our approval or, or not. Um, Commissioner Cohen. Uh, I'll just make one comment. I, I think uh, uh, just we'd like some nice landscaping on the Wallingford side. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think your um, environmental planner 
has asked for some additional plantings and we're waiting for her final, final report, so. Perfect, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, action to continue. Mr. Chair Fitzsimmons. Mr. Chairman, I move we continue the um, application for a um, special permit Fill and Excavation, Hutton Street, 21, LLC, at 1299 South Broad Street to our March meeting. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any just nays? Just record, that's which date exactly? March. March 13th. Second, what's the second Monday? Yep. 13th. Uh, March 13th. Yep. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Have a nice night. Yeah, you too. Thank you, Mr. Pagini. See, we are on the last public hearing, and that is proposed text amendment 6.35 moratorium on warehousing, warehousing distribution in all zoning districts in town, application 901 23. Can I ask uh, Commissioner Cohen to, to read in the legal notice and also any correspondence? The following public hearing. 901-23 proposed text amendment to add section 6.35 that would enact a townwide moratorium on warehousing and warehousing slash distribution uses will be heard at the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission's meeting of Wednesday, February 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the town council chambers of Town Hall located at 45 South Main Street. For correspondence, I have a uh, memo from the Economic Development Commission to uh, Planning and Zoning Commissioners uh, from Hank Baum. And I believe that's all the communication. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Bergini, you have anything on this text amendment? Uh, yes, so um, we've been discussing this already, so we're hoping to set up a workshop in March uh, with options, ideas. Uh, we realize that there's a lot of emerging <coughs> warehousing type uses that are you know, coming along that I think we should look at geographically, uh, you know, district by district and see what we should allow what we shouldn't allow and really do a comprehensive uh, analysis of you know how we um, look at warehousing because warehousing is a very evolving uh, subject and so I think we need to you know just w just allowing warehousing as a general use doesn't work anymore um, so I think this will I think we need to work as quickly as possible on this hopefully it won't last six months but I think it's necessary to um, you know, just evaluate where it should be allowed, where it shouldn't be allowed, where you know, either by special permit or uh, with certain restrictions. Um, so I'm in favor of this, um, but I think we need to work as expeditiously as possible in um, getting this figured out. What are we thinking for like time? Right now I have it until six months. Um, but I was hoping, you know, to hopefully repeal it sooner if we make progress. I was thinking of a workshop for mid-March, uh, somewhere around there. So I'll be sending out a, a poll to get your time and availability. And you know, if we have to have multiple workshops after that workshop, then um, that certainly can be something we can set up. Uh, commission members with any comments? Commissioner Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I am in total uh, support of you know, this moratorium. I, I think based on um, you know, the, the recent approval of a 450,000 square foot um, warehouse had challenges for us and I quite honestly I don't I 
I'll speak for myself personally, I wasn't uh, uh, thrilled with, um, you know, the, the way the regulations did, the current regulations did allow this, you know, and I agree with Mr. Pagini completely that uh, there are many, many different types of warehouses and I think we need to be cognizant of that fact and um, not to rehash the, the last meeting, but you know, I personally brought up a lot of differences and you know, the, the sizes of the warehouses, you know, based on you know, square footage, the height of the buildings. Um, so there's a lot of variables that go into you know, exactly you know, what a warehouse is going to be. And, you know, I think our regulations, as Mr. Pagini said, you know, should fit, you know, the different types that are now, you know, in place and potentially more differences to come in the future. So, yes, I am in support of this. I think six months would be a good time frame and, you know, taking into account letter from EDC if we you know finish this up um, in a timely manner with w which I think we can do um, you know we could you know and and the six-month moratorium earlier so I, I I do support this thank you thank you uh, any other commissioners or go out to the public sure if it's Simmons all right, all right we'll um, thank you um, I guess if, if I heard the six month, my question would be for the town planner, um, what would be the earliest start date and what would be the proposed end date if we use your six month period? Uh, the proposed end date is July 15th, uh, but I believe the, if it gets enacted tonight, uh, it goes out legal notice, so it would be, um, I believe it, it would be tonight actually. Um, because the moratorium will allow you, once it's enacted, to, um, I'm trying to think of what the date it would be on. We usually have Monday. And, um, it would be sometime either Friday or next week, whenever the legal notice goes out. I don't remember from a Wednesday meeting as to when the, the, the paper, I believe it's Tuesday. It, if I might, I, um, Chairman and I were just discussing, so the, the, the previous applicant to get approved, when the legal notice is published with our decision, that's when it, be, that's yes. when it be, okay. So that's, just, that's the same date. And my understanding is it's five days from action, but, but that's why I, in order to move forward, which is a whole separate question, I need a start date. So. Is the start date next Wednesday? Because Monday's a holiday. Today's Wednesday. I, I you know, I, I don't want to make a mistake on the start date because the end date is open ended, but it's the start date. You know, it's effective. Right. You can't say immediately as possible. It's got to be a calendar specific date. I believe it's Tuesday. Let's just say the twenty second then. All right. So two twenty two twenty three is the start date or no earlier than 2 23 if you need another day is that i mean i, I, I want to provide some wiggle room if you will but the wiggle room would be for getting it in the paper yes and getting it become effective so we can't say effective tonight because it can't be in the paper until right. right okay so thank you and then um mr chairman i guess um I, I read with interest the letter from the EDC, and, and, and I, um, I, I get it. I guess it's the best way to say it, as I get it, and I, I do think that this is something that, um, given um, where we are, you know, we always talk about our regulations being a living document, and we're making changes as appropriate. I think the enactment of a moratorium for a period of no more, no more than six months will allow the commission and the, you know, the, the EDC and any other interested party to allow us to kind of review any potential changes, additions um, to our current regulations. So I, I do support um, 
taking a put, putting in a moratorium on where houses or where housing um, um, and, and, and then allow us time to work on it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Parent. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really in favor of this. And the reason why is when you look at any of the different types of warehouses, um, all of them, you know, if you're following good business practice, you need to get it, you need to turn over the stock. It's that you don't make money just by storing things for months or years on end. <coughs> And so, given the um, inherent busyness of a warehouse, yeah, I think a, I think that we're uh, on solid ground deciding you know, where we can put these and where we can allow a warehouse, and where we can take into consideration the actually on the surrounding neighborhoods. So, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm very happy to support this uh, moratorium. Thank you, and so am I. Um, let's go out to the public. We'll start over here. You know the rule. Joe, <coughs> I'm sorry. Joe Mira from Economic Development Commission. Uh, first of all, I appreciate what I'm hearing this evening, that the time factor of the moratorium will be as minimal as possible. I want to co co compliment the uh, commission because it's been long standing that this is a commission that looks forward to welcoming business to the area. My concern personally is that uh, by putting moratorium in the papers, people may get the wrong impression of Wallingford that we're not welcome, we're not open for new business, and which again, just hearing from the feedback from the commissions and town planners, that's not the case. We're trying to address a problem of, a, of an evolving uh, industry, and we're trying to meet the standards that the town needs to make it uh, coexist with our current community, which I can accept. But again, I look forward to a speedy turnaround, and if the papers are listening, this is not a negative impact, it's just addressing a problem of an evolving business that needs to be addressed properly. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much on this side, right over here. Good evening, Bob DeMeo, I'm Marie Lane. I am, uh, you probably know, in full support of this moratorium. I will say, um, candidly, I'm not as excited about the let's get it done in six months at any cause. I, I know that's definitely, probably, enough time to get it done, but the notion of an artificial deadline not knowing for sure what we could turn over, state, you know, I don't know how deeply we're going to look into this. I have a ton of faith in Kevin and Allison, and, you know, candidly, it's your guys' time that is probably the premium on this. So I would just say, you know, respectful to the businesses, I think, um, you know, worrying about what it says in the newspapers and what businesses are thinking. I worry about what the residents think. I worry about, you know, people thinking about the safety of tractor trailers that are rolling through our excuse me, our town. So I would just say totally in favor of it. I'm not, you know, thrilled about this. Let's get it done in six months. It takes us a year to do it right. And that's what it takes. What, I mean, the, these aren't big tax generators, warehouses. Nobody wants Wallingford filled with warehouses. We're talking about manufacturing. We're talking about high revenue taxes. Fine. But they're low-paying jobs. I just I'm completely kind of off to the side on the notion of let's get it done in six months. If we can, I think it's great. I think you will, but I hope there's an opportunity or some wiggle room if we aren't able to. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, Joan Munger, 15 Valley View Drive, Wallingford. Um, I just would like to publicly express my disappointment in the timing of this moratorium. I am totally in favor of it. I agree that warehousing is just too much right now in Wallingford, and we do want business. We don't want warehouses, and we don't want them in residential areas. 
we fought five years the residents of the neighborhood near five research parkway and a month after you approve the warehouse you talk about a moratorium you're residents of this town and we were here every meeting and we wrote and spoke and looked into this and this is very Thank you. Anyone else? All right, I'll bring it back to the commission. See what the commission has any other comments or what they'd like to do. Commissioner Hines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I guess my question would be if we were to um, pass this moratorium with a six month um, limit, that does not prevent us from extending that? Uh, no, um, we could extend if we, you know, if you vote on to extend it. Yeah, I, I, here's my concern with that arbitrary time limitation, is that my feeling was that I have a specific recollection when we were reviewing um, the initial revisions, that there was a push to set a deadline for approving those revisions. And I, at the time it struck me as a little odd because I, I thought, you know, it, it should take us whatever it takes us to get it right. And there was a push to, I, I think, pass those revisions um, so that it could be over and everybody could know what they were. And part of me thinks, you know, why, why, set, a, why set a deadline? I mean, obviously we wanna, what's more important is that we get it right, not that we, not that we get it passed. And um, I, I think if we set deadlines, we're just setting ourselves up for another failure. Um, and um, and I agree uh, that if I were one of those neighbors in that neighborhood, I would be pretty upset uh, right now. And and I get that. And I I don't want the last thing I would want is to repeat that. That's uh, so I, I I'm in favor of the moratorium. I think it takes us what it takes us. Obviously, we want to get it done as quickly and as efficiently as possible, but we also want to get it done right. And so I, I really don't see the need for a, a deadline, but um, that's, just, that's just my feeling on it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with you know, my, my fellow commissioners here. Uh, absolutely want to get it right. That's without a doubt, want to get it right. And again, I, I, I think this is a fairly complex issue that is gonna take a lot of time. And you know, based on the last application, you know, there was a document that I came across and I'm sure a few others did about uh, how New Jersey, the state of New Jersey set up, you know, the warehouse capital of America, I guess, set up their standards and practices for warehousing in New Jersey, and it's quite involved. And, you know, it does look at the balance between business needs and the residents. And, and again, I think that uh, we missed the target on our, our last approval as far as, you know, looking at the, the residents. Um, I do think we need to put a stake in the ground though, as far as a date. And the date is flexible. If we don't have, if, if we're not working towards a date, then things seem to drag. You know, they're, they're just gonna drag out. And um, it is, you know, again, as Tom Planner 
said, we can always, you know, extend the date if we need to. But just to say it again with Mr. Hine and, and Mr. Parent, want to get it right. Want to get it right for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fitzsimmons. I, I agree with all prior speakers. You know, certainly, um, we definitely want to get it right. I, I do want to mention um, uh, regarding the moratorium, the reason I was asking the question for the town planner. Um, as you know, we all serve the public, we serve the town, you know, we, we, rep you know, we have to be fair to the property owners, we have to be fair to the abutters. Um, by putting a start date and an end date, that's what's legally required. You know, I, I'm thinking, I was thinking as you were talking, Commissioner Himes, you know, when, when the state passed the um, marijuana um, um, bill, law, you know, that said, okay, towns could allow this now, you know, we, we very quickly put a moratorium on to allow us time to draft a reg and then, you know, restrict it and say it's not allowed in Wallingford. So, um, uh, you know, I, I think if I could, and you, you all know me well enough, I kind of, you know, let me tell you how, let me tell you how I think, you know, it could go, is at first workshop, we might say, okay, the moratorium doesn't affect these zones, and we start releasing it in zones while we still work on it. That's just one person's opinion, but I, I do think to a property owner who wants to do something, who's in a, a zone that is industrial, that currently allows warehousing, it is fair for us to put a, a end date, which could be shortened or lengthened, as long as we work to, um, you know, um, work towards the end of obviously um, addressing and review, reviewing the, the regs. Warehousing is a huge topic in most towns, most planning and zoning, most prop, most property is that because people aren't building corporate headquarters anymore. They're building warehouses. So, you know, in planning magazine, that's what they always talk about. So, you know, we're, you know, we're no different than any other, any other community. So I agree, let's get it right and let's get it done. So I'll, I'll be supporting this um, um, moratorium. Any other commissioners? Do we feel like we can act on this? Yes. All right, so I first I call for a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I move we close the public hearing on the proposed text amendment to add section 6.35 that would enact a town-wide moratorium on warehousing and warehouse distribution uses. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Motion carries. Thank you. Do I hear uh, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Fitzsimmons? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that the commission approve a text amendment to add six, section 6.35 to the Town of Wallingford zoning regulations entitled Moratorium on Warehousing Throughout the Town of Wallingford, Connecticut because it allows the town and the Planning and Zoning Commission and any interested parties to review any potential changes or additions to the current Town of Wallingford Planning and Zoning regulations. The moratorium is to be effective no sooner then February 22nd, 2023, and the proposed end date would be a six month window ending at or near July 15th, 2023. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, all in favor, starting with Commissioner Hine. Yes to approve. Cohan. Yes. Fitzsimmons. Yes. Parent. Yes. And yes, motion carries. Thank you. All right. Out to the town planner, we have bond release and reductions. Kevin, you have anything there? Uh, that bond will not be released. Yeah, okay, um, don't have to worry about that. How about the annual report? Uh, sure, I can just go over the uh, the high notes if you'd like. I think. Uh, You've been involved in doing most of this, so um, I don't know if you have any questions about it or not. <laughs> um, we hope to uh, hopefully in the next coming year talk about uh, uh, redoing the sign regulations as they are currently not um, constitutional in nature. Um, Hopefully discussing accessory apartments, um, warehousing, 
minimum parking requirements, um, looking at the plan of conservation and development, um, and we're currently also working on a uh, draft of the regional hazard mitigation plan with SCROG. Um, so that's currently in the works as well. Um, I don't know if you've had any other comments or questions regarding the annual report. If you take out the warehouse, 2022, there wasn't that much. Yeah, no. A lot of uh, small stuff, mostly yeah. text amendments. Uh, there was a lot of approved uh, square footage, but yeah. Yeah. More and multifamily units than, than usual, so. Any, any commissioners have any comments on this? All right, you're on a roll, go for it. Administrative approvals. Uh, any questions on those or comments? Any commissioners have anything on that? We have then I also included the, uh, the quarterly newsletter from the uh, Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies. Uh, there is one update I would like you to be aware of. Um, the new law requires charging facilities for electric cars in commercial and new residential devel development. So as of January 1st, uh, all new construction of commercial and multi-unit residential developments with 30 or more parking spaces must include uh, electric vehicle charging stations for electric vehicles uh, and at least 10% uh, of the parking spaces. But we may require more than 10% if we feel that it's necessary. Are they requiring where they have to be, or there's no guidance on that, right? There isn't much guidance, and it's unclear as to you know what's considered commercial as opposed to light industrial. Um, so that may be something that needs to be you know discussed if we have an application in front of us that's new construction. Got it. Um, and. The ZBA was canceled? Uh, correct, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I have, I have a Mr. question Pinson. on the newsletter. Yeah. So Public Act 2020, 25-22, 22-25, are you gonna review our regs and propose additions to our regs to, ref, to reflect that new state law? I may, I'm working on a bunch of, uh, bunch of uh, text amendments to reflect state statutes right now. Uh, okay. Because there's a there's a bunch of different ones even from last year that took effect, such as character, uh, has to be taken out. So I may do a one, right. all inclusive sort of text amendment to include that. Could um, could we just do that in a workshop when we do the warehouse? Uh, we can if we have enough time. I believe we want uh, uh, the law department also wants to discuss. Um, reasonable accommodations as part of that warehouse, or part of the uh, workshop, sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, reasonable accommodations and minimum parking requirements. So I don't know how much time we'll have to discuss further, but you know, if you think you have time and you want to do a four hour workshop, something like that, then that's up to you. But we could do multiple workshops. Um, okay. It's not a necessity. Some of the language is very, very old that uh, doesn't comply with the statute, so. How about the ZBA notice for February 22nd? Um, let's see. I don't get that. I didn't, there wasn't attached. Yeah, it wasn't one attached. Oh, I apologize. Uh, maybe she wasn't ready with it yet when the packets went out. I will send that to you electronically. Is there anything else, commissioners? Commissioner Cohen. Um, yeah, just just one comment. Um, you know, I attended the Scrag meeting uh, last week, and you know, we we have the education requirement, and I believe March 11th is an all-day uh, session where three of the four hours will be covered with that, and and I think. Mr. Beghini sent out info on that. 
Um, I did hear that that one year uh, requirement to get it done may be extended. Um, so, but anyway, just that's the announcement. Thank you. And I think I sent some additional links too. Like there's uh, some land use training online as well. Um, yeah. So yeah. if you want to do something for free, you necessarily don't have to pay for it to sit through. They do have some classes on there. So just let me know if you're looking for any training opportunities and I could try to find something that may fit your schedule better. Uh, but there are certain requirements for certain topics. Um, so if you need any help finding anything, let me know and I'll try to guide you. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Motion carries. We are closed. Nicely done.